for this year's study abroad applications, I had over 200 SOPs and LORs to review. And when you go through so many documents dealing with the same topic, you sort of notice a pattern. You see the students making the same mistakes over and over again. And that is what I'm going to share with you today. So that you don't make that mistake in your next application. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of Eyes Up Communications. And in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 unknown SOP and LOR mistakes that no one would ever tell you. So without further delay, let's get started. The first mistake is writing too little or writing too much. I received SOPs which were only around 700 words with very less information. And I also received SOPs which were over 2000 words. And then students asking me, ma'am, how do I cut this information? So guys, for your understanding, generally the SOP word limit is around 1000 words. So when you're writing your SOP, you should target to write it somewhere between 850 to 950 words. If you write less information, it reduces your chances to convince the admissions committee why you're a good fit for the program. In fact, the admissions committee might think that I gave this guy 1000 words, but they have nothing more to say about themselves, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you give an SOP, which is 2000 words, of course, you can't submit it because you can't go beyond the word limit. And then cutting down 50% of your SOP from 2000 words to 1000 words also becomes very difficult. So what you need to do is that while writing only, you need to think what information is important to include, include only that, and then remove all the unnecessary information. The second mistake that I saw most of my students making was writing their projects as if it's a project report and not an SOP. Most of the students, they get so fixated about the research projects that they've done that they will start explaining their projects in detail. For example, they will first write, I worked on so-and-so project titled and then a very long title they will write. And then they will say, this is what my project was about. These are all the techniques I used. These are all the methods I used. Ultimately, this is the result I got. And this is how I was successful in doing that project. Done. <laughs> so this looks more like a project report, like an abstract of a project report rather than an SOP. What is an SOP? An SOP is a statement of purpose. It is about you and not about the project. So while you do share some information about the project, it's important to look at it from another angle. Write what were some of the challenges that you faced while doing the project? How did you overcome it? And what was your learning from that experience? The third mistake is opening your SOPs with cliched stories. Oh my God, I am so tired of listening to them. Most of them will start with, as a child, I love to play computer games, which is why I've taken my undergrad in computer science. Or as a child, I used to love dismantling a cycle. That is why I'm doing my master's in mechanical engineering. Or some will talk about technological revolution. That today we are using smartphones. AI has such a big role to play in the future and how the technology is going to evolve. And I want to be a part of it. That is why I want to do my master's in data science and AI or machine learning. Trust me, guys. See, because you're writing it for the first time, you will think that it is original. But there's nothing more rusty than this. So, how can you avoid writing such cliched openings? Well, try and think of a story. A moment in time when you realize that you really enjoy this field. Or the first time when you realize that I really want to pursue my master's in this area. These kind of stories, they are original. They are more mature as compared to writing childhood stories. They have a certain amount of emotions and feelings attached to it. And... It makes it interesting to read, which immediately grabs the attention of the admissions committee. 
I do have a lot of examples which I can share with you, but then you will all copy it and you will not be creative. So I won't share it here. The fourth mistake is not talking about your career goals and why do you want to pursue that degree. A lot of students while talking about their projects, internships and work experiences, they forget the why of the SOP. So once you have listed down all these experiences, it's important to share why do you want to pursue this degree? Why do you want to pursue this master's program or PhD program and why right now? Why not before? Why not later? Why do you think right now is a good time? That question is very important to answer. And along with that, you share what are your career goals. So what do you want to do in the next two to three years, which is like your short term goal? And then what do you want to do in the next five to 10 years, which is your long term goal? This also gives confidence to the admissions committee that you know what you want to do with your life, what you want to do with your career, and you're not just taking this degree out of a whim. The fifth mistake is not following a proper chronology. I've come across SOPs where people first talk about their work experiences, then an academic experience, then an internship. While you can do that because there is no specific way to write an SOP, what you need to keep in mind that the information needs to flow smoothly and it needs to be very well connected, which a lot of people are not able to do. So what is better is to follow the proper chronological order. Start with your academic experiences, then your projects and internships, and then talk about your work experience. That way, it's become easier to connect these uh, events together as well. And people also understand how one thing happened after the other. So it's easier to follow. The next mistake is trying to cut down your 1000 word SOP into a 500 word one. When you're applying to multiple universities, there are some universities which would ask for a 1000 word SOP. Well, there would be some which will ask for a 500 word SOP. So what students think is that, okay, let me write the 1000 word SOP first and then I will reduce it to 500 word and submit it to that university. Guys, please don't ever do that. Why am I asking you this? Is because firstly, reducing a 1000 word SOP to a 500 word one is difficult. You have to reduce almost 50% of the content. And secondly, the essence of the SOP is lost. So instead, what you should do is rewrite a 500 word SOP. You can explain all your experiences in brief, so it will not even take a lot of time. And secondly, it will look complete rather than a chopped off version of a, you know, bigger SOP. The seventh mistake is getting your SOP written from someone and then getting it reviewed from me. In my previous video on how to write an SOP, I spoke about how you should write the SOP on your own and don't get other people to write it for you. So what my smart students have done, they've still gotten their SOPs written from other people and to get it fixed and make it original, they try to get it reviewed from me. <laughs> Guys, it doesn't work like that. Even in my reviews, I'm easily able to figure out which SOP has been written by a student and which has been written by a third person. So imagine the admissions committee will find out in a second. So instead of trying to go for the easy route and trying to fool everybody, might as well sit down and write your own SOP. Of course, if you don't know how to write an SOP, how to go about it, I'm there to help you out. So which is the same reason why I've prepared a course on how to write an SOP, which talks about all the different sections which go in an SOP, the information that you're supposed to write. And I've also shared a lot of sample SOPs so that they help you. If you want to know more about the course, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. So guys, these were some of the most repeated mistakes that I noticed in the SOPs. And now coming to the LORs. For LORs, the most common mistake that I've seen students making is repeating the same information in different LORs. For example, the HOD is also talking about that one research project you've done. Project Mentor is also talking about that same research project. Don't do that. Don't let information repeat over your LORs. 
each LOR needs to be distinct. They need to talk about different things. So what can you do? Say, for example, take one LOR from a professor who talks only about how you are in class, how you are in lab, and the percentage that you've got, grades that you've got, basically your performance within the classroom. Okay. Second one you can take from a project guide, which only talks about your research capabilities. How did you do the project? How did they observe you? The challenges you face, learnings, everything. And the third LOR could be probably from an internship mentor, internship guide, which can talk about how you are in the company. What's your teamwork skills, leadership skills. That way, what happens is that all these LORs are different and they are talking about your different skill sets and different work that you have done. Another mistake that I've seen students making in their LORs is using a lot of adjectives for themselves. For example, he's very motivated, diligent and resourceful student. He is also very good at problem solving and stands out from his peers. He is also very amicable with his peers and respects his teachers. You see, these are all adjectives without any supporting evidence. So what you should do is firstly use lesser adjectives. And whichever adjectives you are using, always try and support it with proof. For example, he is very good at problem solving. Recently, when I gave an assignment in class, he was the first one to solve. Immediately, this is a proof for problem solving. And it supports the fact that, yes, this teacher is not bluffing. She has actually observed him being a good problem solver. Understood? And finally, the last mistake is working at the last moment and then panicking to finish everything in time. Guys, as you can see, there are so many things you need to keep in mind while preparing these documents. And they're also not less. You have three LORs and so many different versions of SOPs to prepare. So if you prepare all these things at the last moment, you will not have the time to iron out the nitty gritties. And then you will have to submit a crude version of whatever you've written. So what you need to do is plan it out. Write everything properly and most importantly, get it reviewed from somebody who's experienced to get good quality feedback. To know more about my study abroad course or my study abroad feedback program, you can check out the link in description or in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic career ahead.